video, I'm going to show you how to log in uh, ASP.NET using something called Log4Net. Um, Log4Net is part of a project that the Apache Foundation has for logging events, and there's a Log4J for Java and so on. So here's what happens. If we have an application like the one I'm showing you, there's a form here, an ASP form with a text that's a name and a submit button that that um, when clicked goes to the click and log method. If we go to its uh, code behind class, here's the click and log method. And what happens is whenever I click a log, something happens and I just to debug or just to check that it happens, I write to the console, I write the value of the name and just clicked. So the, the thing though is when I run this, <clears throat> this is a very bare bones configuration. So when I run this, I will see that, for example, here it's going to show something. I'm going to pick a name, Anita, and I'll say go. And when I go back, I don't see the log. I don't see the log anywhere in here. I can go all the way up, all the way down. I don't see my uh, the message that was supposed to appear because console.writeline writes to something called the console, which this is not. This is an output window, and we can't see the console. Now, in a production application, in a, in a production that's, that's uh, uploaded and delivered, uh, deployed and delivered, you also sometimes want to keep logs of certain things that happen throughout the system in a file or something like that, so then if the system breaks, you can look at those logs and see what, what was working and what wasn't. It is very common for people to debug um, debug their applications writing to the output screen but for regular applications, commercial applications, it is much more common that they actually log the events of the application in a file. <clears throat> so log for net gives you the ability to say if you want to write into this window you can, if you want to write to a file you can, if you want to write to the cloud you can, if you want to write to all three you can and so on and so forth. And This is what we're going to talk about today. So, <coughs> how do we get this? The first thing is that we need to install the log4net package here using, um, using NuGet. So, we go here to the project or the solution, right-click, and then we say manage NuGet packages for solution. In here, we go to browse, and we can just type here log4net, and here it is, the first one, right? So we'll install it. This window is a little tiny, but you can see that here the installed version is really not installed, so we just scroll down. The latest version is this one. If I just move over there, it offers me the option of install it. Once I click on these two ups on the first box, then I click on install. It's going to install it for this solution. I'll say OK. <clears throat> and it finished. So it successfully installed it. Now I can use this. I'm going to close the NuGet package manager. I'm going to move this a little bit over to here. And now I have my screen back. So now that I have this, log for net is basically you need basically you need to do three things. The first one is to create a configuration, which is actually going to tell Log4Net where do you want your messages to go. The second one, the second step, is that you'll need to get a logger, which is an object that actually logs. And the third step is actually you need to do the actual logging, writing. So the first step is the configuration file. To create a configuration file, we can go to our project, right-click, under Add, we can go to Add New Item, and here we're going to add a plain text file. So we'll look for text file here. Um, should be sorry, text file. It's a very plain text file. We're just going to call it something though. We're going to call it log4net.config. And we're going to add it to our project. And here it is, log4net.config. <coughs> now the configuration file is an XML file. <coughs> It is very simple. For now, I just uh, 
suggest you copy what I'm going to do and then you can read more about the configuration file later on. So the first element here is a log4net where we tell it this is going to be a log4net configuration file. Then we're going to say where we're going to create a location of where our logs can go. That's called an appender. So I'm going to create an appender. The name is going to be debug, for example. The name is going to be debug. And um, <clears throat> the, uh, the type of logger. So the type tells what are the capabilities of the logger. In this case, it's going to be a log for net dot appender dot debug appender. This appender, this, this is a capability of log for net to actually go and write messages to the console. I'm going to close this. There, the appender, and inside the appender, I'm going to create a layout. So whatever messages I, I, I put in this area, I can have them have the date, the, you know, uh, the name of the class, so many things. And that, that I control with the layout. <clears throat> the layout I'm going to use here, okay, will be layout um, and then the type of layout. For now, I'm just going to go with a simple layout, which is a default, you know, the name of the name of the log, the name of the logger and the message that you pass. And that's a log for net dot layout dot simple layout. <clears throat> Excuse me. And that's what I'm logging. Now, <clears throat> I want, as soon as I write, I want things to appear here. Sometimes the, the server might be doing other things and it won't show up. Whatever it is that you want to log it won't show up here. So I want, whenever I write, I want it to immediately go to this screen. And for that, I'm going to use this property, mediate flush, and the value of this will be true. And that's it, and that's my appender. So I have created a destination. Just like this, you can create destinations for files, uh, for the cloud, and so on and so forth. They have different properties. You can, you can look them up. That's my appender. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say <clears throat> to the logger, to any logger, to use this appender. And I will do this by saying root, which means every logger. What level am I going to log? There are several levels that you can log. You can log warnings, you can log information, you can log debugging, you can log a lot. So for all levels, I'm going to have uh, the appender be debug because I name it debug I can name this actually I'm going to do Duffy just to this is just a simple name so the appender I'm going to use <clears throat> for all all logs for all kinds of logs I'm going to use the appender Duffy okay so and Duffy is here defined as something that will write to the screen that's my configuration file that's done <clears throat> you do this once and never again now I need to go to my class and actual to do the actual logging. For that, I will need to create. I will need to first go. Uh, <clears throat> I will have a few uh, using clauses here. Uh, one of them is system.io. You will see why is that. Now, I'm going to create a variable inside my class, which is going to be. Uh, private static read only and this will be my logger and it's going to be a log for net I can use this in the usings but log for net dot and then it's called an i log okay and my logger I will just call it log and that variable it's going to now it's going to have it needs to have a name and the name that I'm going to give it is the name of this class or whatever class it's in. Okay, so I'm going to do log for net dot log manager. This is a factory, right? That's going to get me a logger. And then here goes the logger name. Okay, I, I, can, I can say, you know, if I want to reference that class, the name of this class, I can type it as a string. 
where I can actually use a very cool reflection method that will get the name of any class. So you can copy this line and paste it in any class you want to log. So it'll be system dot reflection dot method base dot get current method and then open and close parentheses and, and then <clears throat> declaring type. So basically that is the name of the class. Semicolon. And now here I have this line is a little longer. Remember this can just be a string if you want to. Uh, it's a good practice to have the name of the class be the logger name because when when you see the logs and you have many classes you know where the problems are which class generated the problem so we have that one now so we have a configuration here a logger a logger in my class now i need to tie the two together i'm going to use this page load method because it's something that loads really early on i'm going to use this to tie the logger uh, to the configuration so the thing that i'm going to do now is i'm going to do a log for net dot config whoops config dot xml configurator and I'm going to say for all the log my all log for net I'm going to use this configure uh, configuration file so configure and then I need a file object that points to the file and for that I'm going to do a new file info and then where is this log for net.config? You can put the path here to the exact location, but then there's also other classes in C Sharp that allows us to get here very quickly. And that is server.mappath. <clears throat> and then here I just say log for net.config. What this is saying is that it's saying that from the server's relative path, so from here basically, select the thing that's called log for net.config. This squiggly and forward slash means the root path, the root directory of my server. So that's where I'm going to get the configuration, and I'm going to configure this once for my class, and you actually can configure once for the project. We're going to talk about that later. And then, so I have the, config, the configuration file, and I load it up. I also have my logger object. Now I need to log. So instead of console write line, which doesn't work, I'm going to say log dot, and then there are many levels of logging. I can log for debug, information, fatal, error, warning, and I'm just going to say, you know, I'm going to log for warning. So I'm going to say log dot warn, and then just the string that I want to log, and that's it. I'm going to save this, and then we're going to run our project, <clears throat> our solution. So here's the, um, here's the form. I'm going to put a name. I'm going to hit go. And if I look at my console, I have the name of the class, which is what I named the logger, and then warn, which is the logging level, and then my message. I need it just clicked. And that is how you can log anything. Now, a little, a little bit of discussion about this is this is a very basic bare bones application. There are things that you can add to this application, such as a global ASX file or a startup.cs class, depending on how you're programming this. And you can load this configuration only once for the whole project if you know where to, where to put it, but we're not covering that here. This is a really quick and dirty method to get your logs going. Any class, you can just copy this line, create that one configuration file, copy this other line to load the configuration. You only need to do this once and then just log away. It's really three lines of code.